Hello and welcome to Microsoft Outlook 2010. Calendars. Microsoft Outlook 2010 Calendar is the calendar and sharing component of Outlook. Here we can create and edit appointments and events, organize meetings, view calendars side by side or in layout view, send calendars through email, and even manage other users' calendars. We'll start by exploring the calendar environment. I'm going to start by clicking on the Home tab, and you can see that the tab displays the ribbon down below, and you'll see the different groups. So we have New for creating something new, Go To, so moving to a different location or time, Arrange is where we're going to be able to arrange our calendar in different views, Manage Calendars if we have permissions to open or view other people's calendars, and also some Share Options. Let's take a look at changing our view of our calendar. Now there's many different views here. You can see I'm looking at the week view right now. We can simply go to the work week or the day or even the month. But you also have other options as well. If you look down here on the right, you'll see that there's some other options like normal, calendar and task, calendar only, and classic view and depending on what you click on will determine what your calendar is going to look like. And mainly what it's doing is it's turning on and off certain features, such as the navigation pane that's found over here on the left, the to-do bar that's found over here on the right, and if we look at a view like this calendar and task, you can also see your task list here. So if you create task and they have a specific due date, and they land on a particular day that you're looking at in your calendar, you can see these tasks right here. So they're following you along with your calendar. So the navigation pane seems to be minimized, and I can simply expand that out by clicking on this single arrow right here. So I can either collapse it or expand it. So this is one way that we can expand or collapse certain parts of our calendar view. Now to create a new appointment, I can simply click on the date here in my date navigator, or I can use these arrows to move forward. So let's say on Monday, I am going to create an appointment that's going to remind me to run a report at 3.30. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to find 3.30. And I have different ways of actually creating the appointment. I can single click and just start typing in. Or what I can do is I can click on the New Appointment button up here in the upper left of the Home tab, or I double click, and it will open up a new appointment form. Now depending on where you are and what you clicked on will determine what type of form you get. There's basically three forms in Microsoft Outlook when we're talking about the, using the calendar. We have an appointment form, and notice the word appointment here. An appointment is something that has a start and an end time to it. If I click this all day event, notice now it becomes an event, freeing up my time. So this might be something that you would use for to remind you maybe of a birthday or an anniversary or some type of event going on, but it's not really tying up time in your schedule. So again, watch what happens when I uncheck it. It now is in a specific appointment with a start and an ending time. And notice my calendar is now going to show me as busy. If I click on Invite Attendees, what you're going to find is it's now going to open it up as a meeting form where I can invite others to a meeting. But I'm just going to click on this and I just want a reminder at 3.30 to run a report. So 3.30, let's say it's going to take me 15 minutes. So I'm going to double click on the 30 here and I'll put in 45. All right, so from 3.30 to 3.45, I want to be reminded to run this particular report. You notice the Save and Close button in the upper left. And notice my report. Let's say, for instance, I need to run this report every week. And I want a reminder that repeats every week. I don't want to have to go to the, the following Monday and type in this same appointment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click, and this is how we can edit an existing appointment. Double clicking opens up the form. And instead of, like I say, creating a brand new run report appointment, I'm just going to come right over here to the reoccurrence tab. And I'm going to have this reoccur for a period of time. 
Now, the way the reoccurrence pattern works is there's really three areas that you have to work on. What is the actual time? And this one's from 3.30 to 3.45. And how often does it reoccur? So what's the pattern? Well, is it daily, weekly, monthly, or yearly? And if you click on any of these reoccurring patterns, you will see a difference in the options that are displayed over here on the right. So weekly, is it every Monday? Maybe it's every Monday and Wednesday. Monthly, you've got a couple different choices and the same with yearly as well. So it is going to be weekly, so it's going to reoccur every week on Monday. And then we have our range of reoccurrence. So when does it start and when does it end? If this is going to go on forever, then the no end date will work well. You can only set a specific number of occurrences or you can end by a specific date by clicking here and looking at the calendar. This is going to end by October 25th. I'm going to say OK. Notice my reoccurrence is labeled right here. Occurs every Monday effective 8-30-2010 until 10-25-2010 and it's going to be from 3-30 to 3-45. I'm going to go ahead and hit save and close. I'm going to open up the month view and just to show you what that looks like. But before I do that, notice that this appointment is still selected. And because it's selected, Microsoft has created some additional tools for me in case I want to modify or work with this appointment. Notice up here at the top, Calendar Tools, Appointment Series. This is a contextual tab that only appears when I physically click on an appointment. And you can see here's my Reoccurrence tab. Again, my time being allocated. Do I want a reminder? Do I want to make it private, depending on whether I'm sharing my calendar or not? I can even invite attendees. As soon as I click outside of this, notice that contextual tab goes away. So I'm going to move to the month view because I want you to see, in fact, that we do have the run report. Now it looks like we're going to have to run the report on the 6th, which is Labor Day, and I'm not going to be at work on Labor Day. What I need to do is I need to move that and I'm going to run it on Tuesday. This is a neat little feature. When you have a reoccurring appointment and you need to modify one instance of the appointment, watch what happens. I'm going to double click on this appointment, the one on the 6th. Look at the dialog box that opened up. It's basically saying that this is a reoccurring appointment. Do you want to open just the one that you double clicked on or do you want to open the entire series? If I open just this one, I can modify just this one. If I open up the series, then I globally modify all of the reoccurring appointments. So I'm going to open this occurrence. I want to change this to Tuesday. I'm going to save and close. And now it's just giving me a little warning telling me that I'm only making a change to that one reoccurring appointment. If I wish to do it to all of them, I have to open them all up. I'm going to hit yes. And notice now that my run report is on Tuesday when I come back to work. So moving an appointment is pretty easy. You can double click on it. You can also click and drag and move the appointment. Because again, this is a reoccurring appointment, it's just warning me that I am only moving that one and only affecting that one. I'm going to double click on this again, open it up. Notice the dates changed to Wednesday. Here is the time. So any of these changes can be made very easily. I can come in and modify this appointment multiple times. And if I don't want the appointment any longer, I can simply just hit the delete key and get rid of this specific appointment. And notice it only removed the one appointment that was here on Wednesday the 8th, but did not affect the other reoccurring appointments. Now one of the great things here is you can actually share your calendar and it's very easy to share your calendar with others. Now if you look over here on my navigation pane over on the left, you'll see that I have some shared calendars. To share my calendar, I simply click on the Share Calendar button located under the Home tab. Click on the To button, invite the people that you would like to share your calendar with. This is a distribution list, which has everybody's name in there. And then I'm going to send it off. It's going to give everybody reviewer or read-only permission. If you look here, I'm going to go back to the week view and back to today. Notice in my navigation pane, I have two shared calendars. If I check the box next to the name, you can see that I have a side-by-side -side view of my calendar as well as the other person's calendar. 
One of the new features that we have in Outlook 2010 is the overlay view. As you start clicking on several of these calendars, they can take up quite a bit of room. Notice the arrow on the tab on these other two calendars. If I click on them, notice it overlays these two calendars. I can click on this third one and it overlays this third one as well. So I can view all the appointments in all three calendars but in one view. Now to separate them, it's as simple as clicking on these arrows and moving them back to side by side view. If I want to then close them out, it's as simple as unchecking the box and just restoring my calendar to its full view. And that's a first look at calendars in Outlook 2010.